Okay, we are back. I'm very happy to have on the Goldstein on Gelt show, Jeff Kaufman. He's a programmer, but even better than that, he's got a great story because he and his wife donate more than half their income to the most effective charities that they can find. Jeff, tell us, how did you get involved in that? Well, this is something where I've, it's something I've cared about for a while. The sort of level of suffering in the world is, is depressingly high, and I kind of want to do something about that. And as a relatively well-off first worlder, I'm in this sort of privileged position where there's actually quite a bit that I can do. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let me just cut right to the chase because I'm sure people want to know, do you consider yourself like a socialist or you just figure that you're a good capitalist and you want to give back? Uh, no, this isn't coming out of socialism. This is oh. coming out of the idea that everybody matters wherever they are. I should try and help. Okay, good. I, I like that. <laughs> and... Uh, well, when did you decide to do this? When did you start uh, this approach? I started doing this in 2009, and my wife started earlier. Mm-hmm. And what percent do you actually give away? Uh, we go for half. We, we, we did half last year. We should be half this year. Earlier it was sometimes more, sometimes less. But it was, it was a third for a while, but now it's a half. And how does that affect your lifestyle? We spend less than we would otherwise. I mean, <laughs> are you able to save? Do you have, you know, I, um, this, is a, this is a personal finance show. I'm always talking yeah. to people about saving for retirement. Are you able to do that also? Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of, so I wouldn't recommend that like most people give half. I feel like we are, we are lucky in that we have jobs that pay better than is common in this country. And uh, so we're able to give more. I, th- I think 10% is, is sort of a better number for most people. Mm-hmm. Do you have an emergency fund for yourselves? Yeah, we do. We, uh, we, we try and keep six months to a year's worth of expenses on hand in cash. Okay. And do you have a lot of debt? We have a mortgage on our house. So that's kind of debt. Okay. But it's also backed by the house. Okay. But that, that's, that's what we have for debt. Yeah. Credit card debt, pay loan debt, any any other sorts of debts uh-huh. like a car debt. I guess I guess we have we also have a um, a loan to, that we have to that we use to purchase a heating system for the house. Okay. We had to replace the heating system, and, and that's that's with a loan. Um, right. Yeah, but no, um, we're we we try to avoid debt. Okay. No, it's, I'm, I'm checking. I'm doing a little checkup. As a financial planner, I, I always tell yep. people, first thing you have to do is have an emergency fund. So you got yep. that. And you do savings. You have a 401k or an IRA or anything like that? Yeah, we have a 401k. And do you fund it to the max that you're allowed? Yes. Okay. So it sounds like you're doing the right things. So really, we could say that your charity choice is just a choice of where you spend your money rather than at Best Buy, you spend it on actually making the world a better place. Yeah, that, that seems fair. Okay, so it's funny, actually, you said 10%. Uh, a lot of times I've spoken to people, the, the number I usually throw at is 20%, which came... Oh, I'm uh, not going to argue with that. No, no, no. Many, many years ago, I heard a great speech by Howard Jonas, a big player in the high-tech world also. And uh, I think it was about 15 or 16 years ago. And in his talk, he said that he and his wife donate 20% of everything they earn to charity. And I remember going home and telling my wife that night, I said, I heard this great speech. I think we should try to be like, like the Joneses, <laughs> like the Joneses, like the Joneses. And she said, uh, that's great. So we started doing that. And uh, frankly, things became even better for us financially over the years. And a lot of times I attribute that our personal financial success to being very charitably involved. And on the one hand, you can sort of talk about the, uh, the karma of it, if you'd like. But on the other hand, I really think that people who give away a lot of money have a much healthier attitude towards money because their life isn't all about dollars and cents it's all about what the power is of that money is that a feeling you've gotten also yeah i mean i I try and think about money in terms of the good it can do either in terms of like making the world better or just in terms of like the trying to find with a bit of money that we do keep for ourselves trying to find the places where it will most improve our lives spending it on on experiences and on Objects, if they're going to have like long-term lasting value, trying to avoid spending money on things where in a month I will just think, why did I spend that money? <laughs> I mean, I'm sh- but everyone does this to a large extent. Um, well, everyone does it to a small extent. Yeah, yeah. Right. I, 
I think people do it to, 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 to a very limited extent, but you seem to have taken it to a, a frankly, a logical extreme. We're talking with Jeff Kaufman, who has, uh, he and his wife have, have made a name for themselves as people who give half of their income to charity. Uh, what does your family say about this? Our family's been very supportive. Julia's family was initially worried. I think when, when she initially got into it, she was wanting to give away all her money and was very extreme about it. And over time, she's tempered a bit. And I think her family was worried that she would end up like actually impoverished. Mm -hmm. But them seeing that that's not how it's turned out, they're, yeah, everyone has been very supportive. So t how do you select charities or what sort of charities do you work with? We tend to follow the recommendations of an organization called GiveWell. So GiveWell, GiveWell.org, they do lots of research into sort of what are the what are the ways that you can help people the most? And then they look for organizations working in those fields, and they find really standout organizations in those fields. Um, and then they issue recommendations. And we've been following them for know, about five years now. And they just put out really great recommendations. And so what sort of, uh, what sort of groups are they advising? Well, one of their top recommendations uh, right now is called the Against Malaria Foundation. So malaria is a huge killer worldwide, and it can be prevented with, with these anti-malarial bed nets that you sleep under. Mosquitoes are most active at night. You get malaria mostly from mosquitoes, and so if you, if you sleep under these nets, uh, you're protected. And so they, they distribute these nets. The nets are relatively cheap. They're around $5 for, per distribution, sort of counting all of the costs. And the sort of effect of this is, is many fewer people getting sick, suffering, some of them dying. Mm -hmm. Actually, this is a big, a big uh, cause of the Gates Foundation, no? Yes, this is also something the Gates Foundation takes seriously. They have a relatively similar approach to the world, looking for the places they can, they can most help people. So is this, organiz this specific one, is this a very large organization, or do you consider it sort of a small group? It's, I would say the, mo so it's the most unusual thing about it is how transparent it is. They try very hard to make it easy for people outside to see that they're really doing what they say they're doing. They take photos of all their distributions. They put up on their website all of the times uh, when they make a distribution, how much, where, where the nets went. And this makes, it, this makes it very clear that they're actually doing what they say they're doing. And it, in general, has made it relatively easy for GiveWell to verify that they really are as efficient at distributing nets as they claim to be. That's great. I think that's very important. One of the things that I've always felt is that you should be involved, either be very involved with the specific charity that you're giving to, to make sure that what you're investing in is really what you're getting. And, or, or more often, I'll just tell people, give to small things, you know, very direct, where you're going to put food on someone's table, or you're going to help someone individually. N not that I don't think the bigger organizations are important, but I, I think that you can have a lot more leverage with your donation. You know, a person who's going to give a thousand or fifty thousand or a hundred thousand dollars can can have a huge impact nearby in things that he can also touch not and really see the effect so I like your approach of making sure that actually the work that you're doing is is happening I, I guess I would push back on a little bit of what you said there, so I think contributing to things that you can sort of see the effect in your local community and really touch that can be it can be very fulfilling to like see those changes around you. On the other hand, in general in the world, rich people live near other rich people, <laughs> and poor people live near other poor people. Okay. So if everyone helps the people near them, then rich people get a lot more help than poor people. Uh -huh. I, and, I hear. Yeah, so... Yeah, I get uh, you. No, I'm also, I'm not a big fan of, like, you know, donating to the major, uh, you know, it's like a big, in New York City, it's a big prestige to be the guy who donates the most money to the you know, New York Library, where there are, you know, 10 miles away, there are kids who don't even have books in, in school. So I, I see what you're saying. Point well it's, made. It's even, it's even more extreme than that, though. I mean, so yes, uh, the New York Library, compared to people elsewhere in New York City, there's, there's a big difference in, in need. But also New York City versus other countries, mm -hmm. e even the poorest people in the U.S., for the most part, are better off than the poorest people in the poorest countries. So my wife and I have, have mostly focused internationally for this reason. Have you traveled around to see what's going on? We, we've traveled some, but mo mostly, mostly just as sort of general tourists, not like looking for organizations to donate to. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, listen, Jeff, I have to tell you, I'm very impressed. I, I really hope that you, uh, that you set an example for many, many other people. Because, uh, frankly, the, the becoming a person who is a giver not only changes the 
and helps the people you're helping, but it really changes the character of who you are, and I think really makes you a, a, a stand-up kind of guy that more people should should uh, aspire to be like. So in the last few seconds, just tell us, how can people learn more about what you guys are doing? My wife runs a blog at givinggladly.org, sorry, givinggladly.com, that I think she, she posts all sorts of interesting things about ways to, uh, ways to approach charity that I think people would find pretty interesting. That's givinggladly.com. Yep. Okay, we will put a link to that at the show notes of today's show at goldsteinongelt.com. Jeff Kaufman, thanks so much for your time. Thank you for having me. You've been listening to the Goldstein on Gelt Show with money maven Doug Goldstein. Doug's weekly radio show is heard around the world, but if you miss it, you can download the podcast at www.goldsteinongelt.com. The Goldstein on Gelt Show gives you up-to-date financial ideas so you can get on the path to financial freedom. If you'd like your questions answered on the air or off, send Doug an email to doug at profile-financial.com. It's your money for your future, so join Doug every week to build your wealth on the Goldstein on Gelt Show.